together. Oh Lord, may your hand lead us from the unreal to the real, darkness to light, from death to immortality. May all be happy. May all be peaceful. May all be enlightened and cultured. May all attain perfection. May peace be established in the three bodies of man. May peace be established in the three worlds. May peace be established everywhere. May truth be our religion. May service be our worship. May knowledge be our breath. May world be our family. May yoga and meditation be our way. May our eyes see happy and noble things. May our ears hear happy and truthful words. May our tongues be sweet and truthful. May our bodies be divine instruments. May noble thoughts come to us from all corners of the universe. May we never leave God. May God never leave us. Om peace and love. Om peace and health. Om peace and enlightenment. Om. So I'm doing a series. I call the series Essentials for Life. Somebody calls them life hacks, whichever way you want to call it. But there are certain things for us to live happily we need, and those I call the essentials of life. Now, what I have to say today, I have to speak to you for 20 minutes, but I can say it in two sentences. <laughs> The topic today is gratitude. Gratitude is the most important practice that you need to do. If you want happiness in your life, practice gratitude. If you want to be healthy, practice gratitude. If you want to change your position in life, practice gratitude. If you want a happy family, practice gratitude. If you any Anything that you want, that most people want in their life, you need to practice gratitude. Now, what do I mean by the word not be gratitude, but practice gratitude? You notice that I'm using the word practice. We think, well, I'm, grat I'm grateful. Uh-uh. Grateful with a, a positive affirmation. Grateful at a certain way. With other words, I tell everyone I meet, practice gratitude in the morning before you do anything else. Write down nine reasons you should be grateful for. I thought it was seven. Or 10, doesn't matter. <laughs> but I've always said nine because it's a beautiful number, nine, okay? So, practice gratitude. Every morning, go and write nine items that you are grateful for. Not reading, not thinking. Because when we write something, it comes into the brain totally different. Okay? Uh, the imprints are deeper and more powerful. Now, why is gratitude so important? Every thought that you have, every action that you take is an energy field. It's nothing but energy. Actually, you're just nothing but energy. You're a hologram. You're nothing but energy. I mean, it's solid, but we're nothing but energy. They're atoms connected, but they're nothing but energy. What is inside an atom? It's hollow. It's called consciousness. So all of these things are nothing but energy. We are nothing but energy. 
Every thought I have sends out an energy. Ah, now here comes the killer. Every thought I have sends out an energy. It has two things it can do. One, it can affect another person tremendously. Two, it will attract similar thoughts. Okay. Very important to understand, it will attract similar thoughts. Our thoughts are magnetic. So whatever you're thinking, you're going to bring back to yourself. Okay. So if you're thinking gratitude, gratitude has to come back to you. So if you start your day with gratitude, then it, that day, some of the things that come back to you must be of gratitude. It's a law. There's no question about it. It's a law because this is science. This is not, not esoteric. Energy fo follows intent. Okay, So if you're grateful, then you send out that energy field. That's the one thing for yourself. The other thing that is very important to understand, and most important to understand, and I'll give you a quote on that in a minute, is that you have an enormous effect on other people. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Every thought you have stays in the omniverse. Stays. No thought is lost. That's a pretty busy thought process. A pretty busy conglomeration, right? <laughs> so everyone is recorded. Everybody, everything is recorded in the universe. It's out there. Like the NSA. Okay. Okay, I'm also recording for YouTube, so we'll have questions and answers after, okay? When you send out an energy field, then people who have a little bit of that energy and they're not very strong with it, they can tap into a positive energy or they can tap into a negative energy. And similarly with you, with your thoughts, the minute you think of something, you will immediately attract other people. The problem is negative energy is much more accessible because it has a lower vibration, so it's closer to the planet. Where we, when we say think higher thoughts, that means the uh, energy field of positive thoughts has to be a little bit more difficult to reach. It's, it's higher thoughts. We say it. Okay? So whatever you are thinking affects the whole universe. Now, I know, I can guarantee, I can guarantee that your life will change for the better if you practice grat gratefulness. I can guarantee it. But it's practice on a regular basis. Okay? I just came back from Florida and I had one student down there and I mentioned gratitude. And she says, yes, you said that 10 years ago and I'm still writing my nine gratitude list every morning. 10 years later. Mm. Mm. Isn't that good? Okay. I have seen miracles happen because of it. So, any change you want? If you're, if you're happy with your life, you don't need to be grateful. <laughs> but if you want to have more, if you want abundance, if you want a better production, if you want a better, uh, if you want to be spiritual, all of these things are necessary. Practice gratitude for a long time. You don't have to have new nine new things every day, but there should always be something new coming in. Just the fact you have to be grateful and also you have a responsibility. We sitting here, you're listening to me and you're sitting here, everybody who's listening has an abundance that other people don't have around the planet. 
we have a home, we have food, we have water, we have septic. Those things are not really, not everyone has it. Because you have it, and because you study yoga, and because you know, because I've told you, you know how it affects others, it is your responsibility to have more positive thoughts. And that doesn't mean I don't go into negative thoughts once in a while. Of course we do. That's okay. But you can counteract that if every day you come down and you practice, practice gratefulness. Don't just get up, okay, I'm happy, I'm grateful. No, really think about it. Really work on it. Because with that, it comes to you. The difficulty is daily practice. Here's the difficulty we have. The minute something positive happens and we see the result, all of a sudden, we stop. Why? It's called self-sabotage. The Mr. Ego, Mrs. Ego says, uh-oh, she's taking control. I better stop this. Can't have that happening, okay? The ego personality does not like change. Anytime we wish to change, the ego personality goes against it. It doesn't like change. Even if you are miserable, and that's sometimes we say people like their misery because they're afraid to make the change. They don't like it, but they're afraid to make a change. Patanjali said, uh, you know, mentions it. Those that like that, that seek negative thoughts. We seek negative thoughts because we don't want to make a change. So you have to look at yourself and say, why have I stopped my practice? Be it this practice, be it your yoga practice, be it proper eating practice, or any practice. Why have I changed my practice? That would be the question you need to ask. And then you go, hmm, hmm. My ego personality does not like change. And do I wish to follow my ego personality? Once you admit it, once you look at it and you say, okay, this is my ego personality, you already have put power into yourself. Mm -hmm. We all fall short on something. We all have weaknesses of some sort. And that you know. And why is it staying? Okay. Look at your ego personality and see. Why is it, does it not want me to be happy? Why does it not want me to be better? Why am I not doing the things I know I should be doing to improve myself? Okay. And in Patanjali, we call it pramad, right? You learn that word, pramad. The ego that stops us. When you ha <clears throat> this is what it is. You know it's good for you. You know how to do it. You have all the tools. You have the time to do it, even though you say you don't have time, but you really do have time if you look, and you don't do it. You know it's good for you. You know how. You have the ability to do it, ability and you have the time to do it, and you still don't do it. Why? That's what I'm talking about. It's our ego personality does not wish the change, and it's called pramad. Okay? And we have to really carefully look at that. Any change that you would like, go to gratitude, number one. That is number one. You could create gratitude thoughts during the day as well. But that's thoughts. 
I'm asking you to practice gratitude. Now, there is a beautiful book by Anne Besant. It's called Thought Power. She wrote it like 1905 or something like that. It's called Where Thought is it? Power. Is she a theosophist? Yeah. And if we understand the importance of our thoughts, here she, I give you a, a quote. The mind is like a wireless machine. A saint with peace, poise, harmony sends out into the world thoughts of harmony and peace. They travel like lightning speed in all directions and enter the mind of persons and produce in them similar thoughts. Whereas worldly person whose mind is full of jealousy, revenge, and hatred sends out discordant thoughts which enters the minds of thousands and stir them in similar thoughts of hatred and discord. You need to understand how powerful you are and how much effect. You think you have a personal life? Forget it. We're all one. We're all connected. There is no personal life. So you think my thoughts are personal? No. They go out into the world. They're not personal thoughts. You need to take responsibility for what you send out because Here's the other thing. God does not come down into the planet to change things. The energy of the divine has to come through us. The energy of the divine has to come through us. So when we, when we are thinking, we, when we understand that you and I are responsible for bringing out, uh, down the energy of the divine, then you begin to know how important your thoughts are. Okay? You begin to know how important your thoughts are. Now, our thoughts affect the chemistry of our physical life too, our physical body. Okay. Our thoughts are, uh, being grateful will lead to a healthier life, a physically healthy life. By our thoughts, we can uh, change the chemistry in our physical body. Mm, isn't that interesting? Mm. Mm. Yep. So if you read Joe Dispenza, which is now proving everything we've been saying for centuries with uh, neuroscience. He, he explains how the energy has influence on the material world. Unqu quote, if you are going to perform something that is unlimited, you better feel unlimited. If you want to create freedom, you better feel free. If you want to truly heal power, you better raise your energy to wholeness. The more elevated the emotions you feel, feel, not think, the greater you will have on the greater will you will have on the material world of matter. And the greater your energy, the shorter amount of time it takes for your manifestation to appear in your life. In this process, you relax and allow a greater mind, the consciousness of the unified field, to organize an event that is right for you. You essentially will get out of the way when you're surprised by an unknown experience that seems like it came out of nowhere. That's because you created it in a no thing, and it can happen in no time if you create it in a realm beyond linear time. And that's the quantum field. There is no time. Your thoughts have to then have a feeling. So you, gratefulness opens what? It opens the heart center, doesn't it? Gratefulness opens the heart center. And if you have been with me for all these years, most of you have, 
I keep telling you how the art, heart center opens. If the energy of the divine flows through here, comes down your chakras, and flows out of the heart. There can be no heart opening unless your divinity comes through, unless the energy of the divine comes through. And everyone has the divinity within the heart. Everyone has that available to them. Everyone can expand that divinity. No matter who you are, you have the flame of the divine within your heart. You have two options. You can keep it closed up, and it will not suffocate, but it will stay small. Or you can open it up and bring it out into the open, and that flame of love and, and uh, heart energy will expand. Okay? And it's up to us. Gratitude creates that elevated emotion that carries us through the whole day. And then you will have, you look at your daily lives and synchronicity will, will, take, for, will take over. And also you will attract different people surrounding you. And you will dispel some people that surrounding you as well. Because if you are happy, if people are unhappy, they don't want to be around you. Did you notice that? Right. <laughs> so, always see the best in people. Not all people are nice, but they still have the divine within them. And see the have your gratitude. It's a simple practice. It's a very, very simple practice. But it is difficult to maintain. Anything that is good for us seems to be so difficult to maintain. Okay. And it requires mind control because that energy or prama, that energy of your ego self is so powerful because over the centuries we've given it power that it is very difficult for us to combat. But if you practice gratitude, I can guarantee you can accomplish it. Hmm. Now I'm laying my life online. I'm guaranteeing it. <laughs> Not just writing in your journal. Also do other things like thank people when they do something for you. If somebody opens the door for you, say thank you very much. It's amazing how people are shocked. People open the door, I'm getting older, so they are more uh, apt to open the door, and I say thank you. And all of a sudden, that, that no smile came, comes into a smile. Yes, when we appreciate people, smiles come into them. All of these things are part of your gratitude. And so with that, I would like to close, but I want to say one little uh, Quote from the Dalai Lama, the roots of all goodness lie in the soil of appreciation for goodness. For the appreciation for goodness. And with this, I will close my lecture. And then whoever is on Zoom and you can ask a thousand questions. Om. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Turn that off for me, it's not turning off.